Item number SCP-1123 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures To prevent degradation of SCP-1123 and its markings, it is to be kept in a hermetically sealed container in an argon gas atmosphere while not being tested. During testing and storage, light exposure should be limited to 50 lux, temperature between 20 and 24 degrees Celsius, and relative humidity at 55%. SCP-1123 should only be transported in its container, and should not be handled except during a controlled experiment. When not being tested, it will be stored in a secure climate-controlled locker at Site-19. SCP-1123 is a human skull missing the lower mandible and all of its teeth. Across the exterior squama frontalis is modern Khmer script, written in human blood, that translates as, Remember. Both skull and blood have been definitely dated to 1970, and genetic testing confirms that both are from the same individual. SCP-1123 was discovered in 1980 by Colonel Hugh of the Vietnamese People's Army within a collection of human remains in the custody of the Museum in Cambodia. SCP-1123 was intercepted by Foundation agents as it was being delivered to Hanoi. The Khmer script is badly faded, and invisible to most subjects beyond 5 meters distance. However, when a subject approaches SCP-1123, they will report the script becoming progressively more visible until, at less than 1 meter, they will report it appearing as if freshly drawn. A few subjects at this distance report the writing is still wet. This effect is not reproducible with optical equipment. To record the script photographically requires optical enhancements or UV lighting. The latter is not approved for use with SCP-1123, as it contributes to the degradation of the object. Subjects at this distance will often also report other anomalous sensory phenomena, including smells, such as cooking meat or ashes, sounds such as soft crying, low heartbeats or breathing, or distant footsteps, and tactile responses such as grit in the eyes, ants crawling on the back of the hand, or glass splinters in the sole of the foot. When subjects touch the surface of SCP-1123, they will experience an associative fugue state. Initiation of the fugue state appears instantaneous and is not affected by cessation of contact with SCP-1123. Symptoms of the fugue persist for 90 minutes to 6 hours. The fugue is characterized by confusion, disorientation, and adoption of a new identity and memories which consist of knowledge, including language, previously unknown to the subject. During the fugue, the subject will lose all memories of their prior identity. Subjects have shown various reactions to this, ranging from near Canatonia to attempts to escape or attack Foundation personnel. As the fugue state subsides, the subject will regain memories of their prior identity, but will also retain memory of the new, imprinted identity and all the knowledge associated with it. Subjects have said that it was as if they lived an entire other life as some other person in the period between touching SCP-1123 and recovering from the fugue. Post-fugue interviews have provided enough corroborative information in of studied cases for researchers to find historical documentation confirming the imprinted personality's correspondence to a specific individual who had lived at some time prior to the subject. There appears no connection between the origin of the imprinted personality and the identity of the subject based on age, genealogy, gender, ethnicity, or national origin. Imprinted personalities share the following characteristics. 1. The imprint died before the subject's birth. Dates have ranged to as early as 90 years prior to less than one year. 2. The imprint was a victim of subjugation, torture, and or imprisonment. Three, the imprint typically died by violence, usually homicide. Sometimes death has been due to secondary factors, such as starvation or infection. 4. The imprint's death was the result of being targeted by a political mass movement, most often with some form of state sanction and or complicity. Subjects undergo no obvious anomalous aftereffects due to exposure, but will show psychological effects common to the types of trauma experienced by the imprinted personality. Grief, survivor's guilt, and depression are typical. Suicidal ideation is rare, but has occurred in a small fraction of cases. It should be noted that in treatment of these aftereffects, use of anesics have not shown any physiological benefit, and has often proved to be harmful. Addendum 1 Experiment Log 1123A Test 0003 Date 
19 Subject: White male of mixed Irish and French ancestry. Age late 30s. Procedure: Subject approaches SCP-1123 and is told to touch it. Results: Subject collapses upon contact with skull, begins screaming in Armenian. Attacks Foundation doctors when they attempt to assist, calling them Turkish butchers. Subject is sedated and disorientation subsided for two hours. Subsequent interviews identify the imprinted personality as an Armenian farmer who was burned alive with approximately 150 other inhabitants of his village by the Ottoman army in 1915. No records exist of the individual, but the event was documented in a 1919 affidavit presented to the Malta tribunals after World War I. Test 0508 Date 19 Subject Asian female of Chinese ancestry Age early 60s. Procedure. Subject approaches SCP-1123 and is told to touch it. Subject expresses apprehension before touching SCP-1123. After touching SCP-1123, subject does not move for 15 minutes. Afterwards, subject sits down on the ground and is unresponsive for two more hours. As fugue state subsides, subject becomes visibly more distressed and begins weeping. Subsequent interviews identified the imprint personality as a 16-year-old Ukrainian girl who died in late 1932 from a combination of malnutrition and the after-effects of rape and beatings by members of a Soviet youth brigade in charge of confiscating grain from the Ukrainian peasantry. Test 1157 Date 2000 Subject Latino female Cuban ancestry, age mid-40s Procedure Subject approaches SCP-1123 and is told to touch it. Results. Before touching SCP-1123, subject complains about smoke irritating her eyes. Subject touches SCP-1123 and ceases all movement and responsiveness for a period of 25 minutes. After 25 minutes, fugue state is concluded, but subject is still touching SCP-1123. Subject does not resist when Foundation personnel escort her from the test area. After one week of being unresponsive to interviews, the subject provides information on the imprinted personality. The imprint was from a Polish woman of Jewish descent who died in the Treblinka death camp in 1942. Test 1815 Date 2000 Subject Black male of Haitian ancestry, age early 20s Procedure Subject approaches SCP-1123 and is told to touch it. Results. Before touching SCP-1123, subject complains about a chemical smell and intense itching of the extremities. Subject touches SCP-1123 and immediately begins coughing. The coughing fit subsides, and subject expresses confusion and distress, but appears reassured when he realizes that the Foundation personnel present are American. Subject communicates a Sarani dialect of Kurdish spoken in Iraqi Kurdistan. Fugue subsides for 60 minutes. Interviews identify the imprinted personality as an 85-year-old victim of a mustard gas attack during the Iraqi regime's Anful campaign in 1989. Note, first instance of an imprint personality that postdates SCP-1123's origin. Conclusions After Tests to date, a clear statistical pattern has begun to emerge. The probability of a subject receiving an imprint from a particular historical event is roughly proportional to the number of victims that can be attributed to that event. For example, percent of imprints come from Communist China's Great Leap Forward between 1958 and 1961. Percent of imprints come from Nazi Germany's extermination efforts between 1939 and 1945, while only percent come from events such as the Armenian Genocide or the Iraqi Amphil Campaign, where deaths are only estimated in the 1-2 million range.